Could not agree more. Okay, Councillor Jacqueline. Well, Mr Chairman, uh, when you hold that position that Councillor Smith holds, I remember my very first Cabinet meeting, it was at Billy St Edmunds, and we uh, had an underspend of £2.5 million, and I accused you at that time of gloating, and I now found that my colleague and your colleague, Councillor Smith, also gloats at the fact that we got £2.5 million underspend. Can I, just, can I just say here that we have the privilege of having time and the um, ability to sit and read the papers and uh, digest them, sometimes get confused by them, but are always able to seek advice. The members of the general public depend on uh, us to question these things. So we do. But if you go and tell somebody in Loistoft High Street, as no doubt Councillor Noble did on Saturday, that the schools in Loistoft are failing because we put one and a half, £1.7 million aside for this, whatever sort of uh, excuses you make, they will say, I'm not interested that one and a half million pounds could have gone towards my kids' education. And it hasn't. So there is absolutely no excuse for underspending on the uh, uh, CYP. We're closing children's centres. Schools are failing. Uh, intervention is absolutely vital. And I welcome Councillor Chambers' um, keenness to get this uh, 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 process underway. I welcome it. But we could have used that money for our children then. And it's now, and I want to be sure that that 1.7 million is still there and will be used. And next time, I want to see an overspend on children and young persons. I really, really do. I want you to say we've had to spend more because we absolutely want the children of Suffolk to get the best possible education. Well, Councillor Jack, I can only say that I think in this chamber we can debate the budgets and we can debate how much money we put across services, but I don't think it's a particularly um, prudent or appropriate comment to say that we should be overspending. I would dread to think what my Section 151 officer would, would say that if we were touting that as a strategy, and, and it distinctly worries me that uh, you, you would even make such a comment. I think we can debate the size of budgets, um, and, and when I'm next in, in Lowestoft, you're most welcome to join me. I didn't see you there on Saturday, but you're most, most welcome to come along to the next one. But um, the serious point here is let's debate the, the budgets. Let's debate what we put across. But uh, the notion that uh, we should overspend a budget I don't think is an appropriate comment. Councillor Smith. I have really nothing further to add, Chairman. Councillor Jackin. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not suggesting for a minute that we overspend the budget because we've got something like no I didn't no I didn't I said we, no I said we could overspend on children's uh, CYP not the budget we've got millions and millions and millions how much is it in reserves 165, 165 million pounds in reserve so no 1.7 pales into insignificance and that money could have gone to the children's services We'll take the substantive point and move on. Right, do we have any other um, comments from anybody else? Thank you. No? Okay, so what we are asked to do in this is to note the financial outturn position for 14-15 for revenue and capital spending, to note the significant transfer of environment in accordance with the Council's financial regulations, to note the balances on the Council's reserves, to note the final position on Treasury management and prudential indicators, paragraphs 65 to 75, and tables 13 and 14. All those in favour are so noting. Noted. We don't vote, we note. It looks very similar, but it's slightly different. Right, we move on. Agenda item 11. Whole system costs of waste management, reviewing support for garden waste collection and treatment. Councillor Hicks, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr Chairman. 
Um, I'm very proud of, the, of Suffolk, the greenest county commitment. I'm also very proud that Suffolk is consistently one of the country's top performers when it comes to waste services. The challenge we face is to keep our councils at the top of the game while reducing cost. We must reduce costs through the transformation of our services, and that applies across the county, and we cannot make waste an exception. The leaders of all councils in Suffolk set the Suffolk Waste Partnership a transformation challenge, and I believe it has come up with the goods. We asked all the waste managers across Suffolk to put the interests of their particular councils to one side, and we asked them to look at the whole waste system. We asked for savings, and we asked for all this to be achieved at the same time as delivering our environmental objectives, which is part of our commitment to Suffolk, the greenest county. Together, Suffolk's councils currently spend £6 million per year subsidising green waste services. And it is the case that most of this money, about £4.5 million, comes from the County Council. But the main point is that the public purse funds the service to the tune of £6 million, and we want to reduce that. So the best way to reduce the costs of Suffolk waste services is clearly to reduce the waste in the system. Ordinarily, if people do not buy what they do not need and they take what they finish with to the charity shops, there is no cost to the taxpayer. And this principle also must apply to garden waste. The reduction of waste is also the best possible environmental solution as it sits at the top of the waste hierarchy. Reduce, reuse, recycle and compost and finally recover energy from what is left. So how do we reduce green waste in Suffolk's waste system and achieve good environmental outcomes? The Suffolk Waste Partnership has come to the view that the answer is not to pick up grass cuttings and other garden waste in 20 large, sorry, 20 ton refuse trucks and drive them at great expense around Suffolk's rural roads. The best environmental answer as part of our ongoing commitment to Suffolk's the greenest county is to do all we can to encourage Suffolk's householders, when they can, to compost their own waste. The new policy signals a change of thinking, and I make no apologies for that, because it is the new thinking we need if we are going to transform our services to deliver an environmental outcomes and to save money. So the Suffolk Waste Partnership is proposing the following. Firstly, that we have a big push to encourage home composting through the provision of heavily subsidised compost bins and equipment. We've asked officers to think creatively and to come up with proposals over the summer to incentivise home composting. Secondly, that we have a communications campaign to, produce, to promote the reduction of waste by home composting. Let us remember that our plastics and textile campaigns have successfully saved us money and, and achieved improved environmental outcomes, something we should be proud of. We now need to do that to encourage the county to become a county of composters. Thirdly, we would prefer the public to compost their own waste, but we must respect that not every household will be able to or want to do their own composting. For those households who would prefer the council to compost their waste on behalf of the Suffolk Waste Partnership is proposing a modest charge of between £35 and £50 pounds a year. We, of course, would prefer not to take householders' cash, as our objective is to encourage the reduction of waste through home composting. So the Suffolk Waste Partnership believes the public choices are home composting their own waste with the support of their local councils, taking the larger items to the Household Waste Recycling Centre, but if they want their waste to be collected, they'll still be able to do so for a modest fee. Our fellow councillors in the Suffolk Waste Partnership endorsed the above policy, but had some reservations. Some of the councils in the partnership, such as Ipswich, may want to retain their free garden waste collection service. The partnership is absolutely clear that each council must be able to make their own decision and their sovereignty to do this is sacrosanct. The only caveat is that the councils which continue with a free service will have to take on a bigger proportion of the subsidy needed to run the free service. If we introduce this policy as a result, there are more homes composting 
there will be a number of positive results, which is good news for Suffolk, the greenest county commitment. Waste will be reduced along with its Suffolk carbon equivalent emissions due to the reduction in waste transported around our rural roads. And our councils will save between 1.4 and 2.4 million, which will be shared 50-50 between Suffolk County Council and the district and borough councils. We are the first authority in Suffolk to consider this matter, and it is now for each council to independently come to their own decision. I understand that this will not be easy. It will be a difficult choice, and I will respect the decisions of the district and borough councils in whatever they decide. We will work with the district and borough councils to make sure the equality impact is fully considered across all Suffolk councils. The district and borough councils will decide and implement any policy changes as they deliver the service to the public, and the Suffolk Waste Partnership will work with them to ensure that the equality impact assessments are fully considered before any changes are introduced. Over the course of the summer, officers across the Suffolk Waste Partnership will start to procure the composting, composting facilities we need. They will work up the detail of a big campaign to promote home composting, and they will put in place the arrangements to fund the transition from the current service out of the savings we will secure. I would very much like to thank the Suffolk Waste Partnership for the proposal they have come up with for the benefit of the whole of Suffolk. It is never an easy choice to introduce a charge, and I am confident that the proposed policy could result in better environmental outcomes, which is very important to me as part of the commitment to Suffolk, the greenest county, and it will save us more than £2 million. I am pleased that the officers across Suffolk have come up with the policy which puts the whole waste system first, rather than the interests of any individual council. We will monitor the outcomes carefully. The measure of success will be that it not only reduces our costs, but reduces the amount of Suffolk waste. And I ask my Cabinet colleagues to support the recommendation before you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hicks. So what we are going to be asked is Cabinet is recommended to support a move to subscription collection of garden waste to reduce costs and agree that where waste collection authorities introduce this policy, the savings are shared 50-50 between the county council and the collection authorities. B, reduce the county council's subsidy for free non-subscription collection of garden waste to the legal minimum. C, increase support for home composting. D, authorise the director of resource management in consultation consultation with the Cabinet Member for Environment and Public Protection and in discussion with the Suffolk Waste Partnership and Suffolk um, and the public sector leaders to undertake the appropriate action necessary to give effect to this proposal. I thought I'd just take this moment just to speak also on this because um, obviously I've been involved in the Suffolk Strategic Leaders element of this and some of the discussions that we've, we've had on this particular subject. And it, for me, it's all about Suffolk, the greenest county. For me, it's all about how we increase recycling and how we actually move forward um, in the way in which we intelligently look at this subject. So in some areas, it's absolutely right and proper that people are encouraged to actually uh, home compost. I think that's incredibly important. And in some areas, we know that isn't practical. So when we started this journey, the Suffolk Strategic Leaders, what we said is it is absolutely vital that every single authority has the ability to have a different approach to this issue. That's what we're working on. That's what we've had a string of meetings on. That's what we're meeting again on Friday. And I think what we also recognise is that this is a sort of statutory paper around where we're at, and each of them will take something to their own cabinet. In another place, I will very shortly debate this as a district councillor, and it's absolutely right and proper that every single district and borough considers this and looks at how they wish to approach this subject. And I have no doubt that there may well be distinct differences in the way in which different authorities do that. That is to be celebrated because that is about local councils making local decisions. So I absolutely back this paper because, in my opinion, what this does is this supports Suffolk, the greenest county, because it's about how we increase the recycling rates, and that is incredibly important as part of what we're doing here. So, right, other Cabinet members, who would like to speak? Councillor Chambers. 
Um, it's a very minor uh, point, actually, but um, I do hope that the um, campaign to increase Suffolk households to take, take up um, composting where possible, and I absolutely appreciate the, the where possible aspect to this, but it also expands to the use of bokoshi bins and wormeries so that we can actually deal with the food waste issue as well, which is incredibly important. I don't believe that local government should be setting up additional systems um, to, to deal with... Um, food waste necessarily when, when that can effectively be dealt with at home at the same time as that you're composting and I really hope that the campaign will take that into consideration. Okay. Anybody else from the cabinet would like to speak? No? Okay. Councillor Finch. I wasn't going to speak Mr Chairman but I think all I can say is I applaud the whole of the concept of this paper. In particular we are facing fund its difficult financial challenges and I think we should help our residents um, in the county to try and see how we can what will work together to reduce that cost and, and I think this paper does that very objectively Anybody else from the cabinet like to speak? Okay, I'll now open up to the floor the first hand I see go up is Councillor Wood um, Yes, um Actually, I applaud some of this paper, and I've got concerns about some. I mean, I applaud it because I'm a Baber resident, and um, I've been paying for brown bins, as you have yourself, in Mid-Suffolk, ever since um, we had them. But, I mean, my big concern is there's 20,000 brown bins in Baber, 20,000 brown bins in Mid-Suffolk. I doubt we're going to see a reduction there because, you know, it's, it's been operating, and... Um, it's a very rural, they're very, very rural district, so they compost and they use brown bins. My big concern is that we've had um, initiatives and projects before. We've had community composting. And what's happened to community co composting? I mean, it's happened, v well, you could count on one hand. It's, it's, and we've had, you know, com the community composters being willing to speak to you. So I've got grave doubts. I, I, I think we will be revisiting it because I can see some people taking up the initiative to, to compost. I can see brown bins still being used because people will pay. You might have a, they might have a bigger distance to go between collecting a brown bin, but you, you, they'll still be on the Suffolk roads. So I think, I think there's a long way to go. I think this is the start of a journey, but I think you'll be re revisiting it once, if not twice. And really, I would like to see the Suffolk Waste Partnership perform what they, what, to, to, to do what it says on the packet. Suffolk Waste Partnership, it should be a uniform platform right across. There should be no differences between Ipswich, between Baber, between Waveney. It should, you know, and that's if, if, the, if the districts and the county are really serious about this, it should, you know, it should do what it says on the packet. So I think this is a start of a journey that I applaud you on. For, for, for taking it and, you know, in the charges because we've been paying them anyway and my residents have given me that message. But I think as the start of a journey you've, you, you, you're making and I don't think this is the be-all and end-all. I think we'll be revisiting this, especially around the composting because I have severe doubts about community composting, about that because I think the majority of people in rural areas have done it for years and, and will continue to do it. I use a brown bin. I compost, so it's not going to make a lot of difference to people like me, especially in <coughs> the, the, the district that I live in and you know, the, the, the district you yourself live in. Councillor Hicks. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Wood. Um, the projections in the, in the, in the paper are uh, very prudent, um, and obviously they've drawn heavily on Mid-Suffolk and Baber as well because of the experiences they've had. Um, all I can say is that we have seen in the past some extremely successful campaigns, and I take you back to the textiles, which is, you know, really has been extremely successful. People now think of putting the textiles in a bag in their bin, which they didn't a few years ago. And also plastics has been extremely successful, getting the right things in the bins. So um, I hear what you say. I take it on board. Um, we will try and do an extremely – well, it's up to the Suffolk Waste Partnership ultimately, of course. But, you know, I'm very supportive of doing a really strong – efficient, well-run campaign, and hopefully we can pick up some of those people. And there is talk of doing some sort of an incentivization to try and get people to move into the composting, but again, that will come forward during the summer uh, through the Suffolk Waste, Waste Partnership. Councillor Newman. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, both you and, uh, and Councillor Hicks have made reference to a commitment to the greenest county, but what I see in this is like unleashing a large number of private vehicles uh, going down to the local household waste recycling centre. And that doesn't really smack to me of being particularly green. I don't know whether the Cabinet member's got anything that he can uh, put my mind at rest on over that. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Newman. Um, I can absolutely assure you uh, that while I'm the Cabinet member responsible for waste, uh, our greenest county aspirations uh, will remain absolutely central to our work. Um, the administration has actually put great weight on under the new leader to this and has appointed last May Councillor Jessica Fleming as the member for special responsibility looking at Suffolk, the greenest county. So I think that speaks volumes. And in fact, only last week we had the formal opening ceremony of our fantastic Energy for Waste facility. And we should be very justifiably proud of that. And let's just remember that the Energy for Waste facility will reduce Suffolk's carbon footprint by 75,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent emissions per year when compared to landfill. So in addition to the facility, we also generate enough electricity to supply 30,000 homes, equivalent of lower stuffed. So I think you can see over and over again, Suffolk, the Greenest County agenda, is absolutely at the top of the agenda, for, and it is a commitment that this will be carried forward uh, going forward, and Councillor Jessica Fleming's position uh, really emphasises that. Um, so full steam ahead from my perspective in terms of Suffolk, the Greenest County. Councillor Beer. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. We'll follow on from that. If you had read the local press recently, you wouldn't have thought, believed that about the Greenness County. But my question to you is, how does charging for green waste collection fit in with our aspirations to become the Greenness County? Councillor Hicks. Okay. Uh, well, in short, uh, our proposals for garden waste uh, will allow us to reduce the environmental impact of waste in Suffolk. Um, the promotion of garden waste composting simply reduces the carbon equivalent emissions and reduce the tonnes of waste we transport around in the 20 tonne lorries around the rural roads of Suffolk. So Tony Blair's government uh, did reward high levels of recycling and composting with substantial capital grants to support our recycling and it made good sense to secure these grants at that time. But today, advice is different, and through this proposal before us, we can move up the waste hierarchy and actually reduce Suffolk's waste. Councillor Lockington. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, as, as an Ipswich councillor, um, you know, we have the free brown bin. Um, I'm well aware that Babe and Mitch Suffolk, I think, have been paying. But actually, that must mean they only get uh, money from the county council with the amount that get weighed in. They, because nobody knows how, many, how much get home, cost, home composted. You don't go around to people and weigh what they compost at home. So Babe are not at the moment getting money from, for that, I assume. Now, an Ipswich resident, I was just counting up in my head, I think dotted around my garden, I've got nine composters. But there are things which I cannot compost. Somebody brought into this garden, and I didn't know when we bought the house 20 years ago, something called winter heliothrope, which is a horrible pest of a plant. I cannot compost that in my own garden. It spreads all over, it's got terrible roots. There are lots of things which I get you know, which I end up putting in the brown bin. Now, we need to be careful that with all this uh, home composting, we don't end up with people dumping things like that particular plant in areas. And you will really get a problem in your greenest county. And, of course, the lawyers will go often down the road anyway. Um, could it mean that if not so many people buy into it, it will then be even more expensive per householder uh, because they've got to pay the cost. So I think that's something to think about if, if local authorities are going then to increase the cost for the brown bin because fewer people buy into it. You mentioned to the um, recycling centres, since there were some closed, I know in Ipswich, 
I really need to be patient sometimes to queue up there to make sure that my, I turn my car off while I'm queuing for hours to wait to get into the center. So I think there are many things you need to take into account. Councillor Hicks. Firstly, obviously it will be down to Ipswich as to whether they introduce a charge or not for your area. That is down to them and it's their decision and they can take that forward. As far as of evasive roots and plants go, of course I would encourage you to take that to the Household Waste Recycling Centre, you know, take it down to your local... And, and, and that, that is where, you know, that's, they are specifically designed to take those sorts of items... Uh, you know, so that is why they exist. So I would encourage you, please, please to do that. I should do that in my car and queue up outside for quite a while. I will remember to turn the engine off if I can. Well, I would encourage you maybe to, uh, to look at a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Evans. Okay, so now I know what to do with my giant hogweed. Um, so the measure of this is going to be oh, the savings and whether it's going to reduce the amount of waste. What are the projections, the volumes of waste that are going to now go, uh, if we have this subscription service, what's the projections, the volumes that will be going of waste to Great Blakenham? Is it more, less, how much less? Um, have you got some figures, please? Can I ask the officer to come with more of the figures, please? Um, we've done some extensive modelling. We've got spreadsheets for across the county, which I can share with you after the meeting. Basically, when we introduce this policy, a number of things will happen. The public will, we hope, and this is our favoured route, compost some of it themselves, and it won't become part of the council system. Some will take out a subscription and place their um, green waste in the bin as usual. Some will take it up the Household Waste Recycling Centre. The thing we'd like them to do least is to put it in their residu residual waste bin, so we'll be discouraging that. But we do, ex we do expect, and we have included in the modelling, a small amount turning up at the Energy from Waste facility, and that's included in the costings. Um, the reason why we want to discourage that so much is that's the most expensive way for the council taxpayer, out of all the options that I've listed, of treating, with that, treating that waste. But the modelling we've done shows that that will be a minority, not least because the public can only shove a finite amount of extra waste into their residual waste bin because it won't fit. So they will compost it themselves, they will take out the subscription service and they will take it up to the household waste site, we expect. Councillor Martin. Well, thank you, Chair. I'm not quite sure where to start. Um, we've had uh, a long regime in this county for uh, some substantial time, uh, indeed since the signing of the Joint Municipal Waste Management Strategy in 2001, um, where we have aimed to reduce and increase recycling, reduce waste and increase recycling. Uh, Councillor Hicks started off by talking about uh, reduction as being the number one thing on the waste hierarchy. Um, but clearly, the only way you can actually reduce the amount of green waste in Suffolk is by getting rid of the plants, because it is the plants that grow which are causing the problem, isn't it? Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, a sort of, I'm sorry to sort of bang the drum of my own greenness, but I mean, we, we are a reasonably green household. However, we have shrubs, we have a couple of small trees, we have uh, rose bushes. Those are not things that can be easily composted in somebody's garden, and there is a substantial quantity of them being produced. And uh, we will be faced with, as a household, we will be faced with three choices. Do we pay £50 pounds, uh, for a brown bin for a year? Do we put it in the back of our Prius and drive it down to the local recycling centre? Or do we burn it in the back garden? Because uh, Councillor Hicks probably doesn't know what the situation was in uh, Ipswich prior to the introduction of back brown bins, but there were quite a few people having bonfires on a regular basis. That is not a green way of disposing of green waste, but it will be a way that people will choose to use. And, and of course, the other way that they will choose to use, uh, as Councillor Hicks 
mentioned is uh, putting it in the black bins, which is also uh, not uh, a very green way of dealing with it. Um, and uh, if they haven't got Priuses, which most people don't, uh, driving it down to the local recycling centre is not a particularly green way. I find it impossible to understand how he can possibly claim that this is either going to uh, increase uh, recycling or indeed to be a green way forward. It's not a green way forward, it's a way of saving money. And I'm not absolutely sure that it will save money because, of course, you've got three options down there. Maintenance, the status quo. Well, I would argue with that, that actually you could have uh, an... Um, uh, an adjusted maintenance of the status quo. You could actually uh, seek to take the food waste out of the garden waste, which I think most of us would agree with. Uh, you could seek to encourage more home cost composting, which we would all agree with, um, and yet uh, and, and so reduce the costs of the free organic waste collection without doing away with it altogether. However, let's leave that one to a side. Um, Introduce deduction of a charged subscription-based service. I can't see how you can call this a saving. It's certainly not a saving to the people who pay the charge. If you're paying the charge, it's a flat rate of tax as opposed to the current council tax, which, of course, is not a flat rate of tax um, and where people in uh, uh, council tax band A and B pay substantially less than people in council tax band uh, D, E, F, G, H. But also, of course, they are far less likely to be producing green waste than people in council tax band DEFGH, and they are also far less likely to have the room or facilities to be able to do the composting at home than people in council tax band DEFGH. My very strong expectation is that virtually nobody in Witton or Gainsborough will be paying £50 a year for a brown bin. And so that leads us to the third one, cessation of organic waste collections. Can Councillor Hicks tell us whether there is anything to stop the districts from just stopping the collection of organic waste collections altogether? Because if an awful lot of people in Ipswich are not going to be paying the subscription for the £50 subscription-based service, then there's an awful lot more money that could be saved by just stopping collections of brown bins altogether in Ipswich, isn't there? Because you do away with the cost of the freighters, you do away with the cost of the service altogether. Um, and I think that that is likely to be the outcome, in Ipswich at least, that we just won't have a brown bin collection service at all anymore. Um, and that leads me up to the final point, uh, which is um, on the, uh, the whole tone of this, uh, sounds as though all of the district councils and uh, boroughs have agreed. I I don't believe that's the case, Councillor Hicks, is it? There was a discussion at the last Suffolk Waste Management Partnership, but there wasn't an agreement. And uh, I think it's a bit um, disingenuous to uh, imply that there was agreement. I don't think there was agreement. I don't think there will be an agreement. And I think that the outcome of this is going to be substantially more uh, green waste either going into the black bins or being burnt in people's back gardens. Could, could I possibly just come in there? Because I'm now completely confused. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I appreciate the quality of a decent soundbite, like as, as anybody else. But um, I, I was reasonably sure that Councillor Ellesmere, the leader of Ipswich Borough Council, had made it perfectly plain that Ipswich Borough Council won't be charging for the brown bins. So they won't be removing the brown bins. They won't be stopping the service. He's made it perfectly plain. You're not going to be charging for it. And the status quo that you have now will continue. So whilst I appreciate the soundbite, Councillor Martin, your own colleague on Ipswich Borough Council has already articulated what the position of Ipswich Borough Council will be, so I just don't get it. If I could come back to that on, Mr Chairman, he has made it perfectly clear that they will not be charging for the brown bins. What will happen uh, to the collection service is another matter, and it, does, uh, it will have a substantial financial impact on Ipswich if they do not charge for the brown bins. And if you go ahead with this uh, introduction of the re reduction of the, um, of the subsidy for the, uh, for the brown bin collections, it is going to be a, a, a very serious financial uh, cost to Ipswich Borough Council and they will have to look at how they're going to meet that cost. 
So, so let's just go through that. One, I'm sorry, Councillor Martin, you really need to talk to your colleague because your colleague has been extremely clear with me that they will not be charging for the brown bin and they will not be withdrawing the service. So that, that, that's where he is. And the massive financial cost is £124,000, and he's already stated that in the press, so I don't see that. And on Friday we'll be discussing that and we'll be discussing transition arrangements. So I appreciate the quality of the soundbite, but it's just not borne out by what your colleague has already said. Councillor Hicks, if you want to respond to the rest of it. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I was just really adding to that. I mean, that's, I mean, Colin's actually touched on all the points that I understand that, you know, Ipswich has said you're not going to charge for the brown bins, but you're going to maintain the service. Well, that is absolutely every district and borough's own decision. And they can, you know, that is the whole point of the Suffolk Waste Partnership. It's the way we take things forward. Each council, district and borough and the county has to make its own decisions and move forward. And that's what this is all about. Um, the absolute best way to reduce the cost of waste services in Suffolk is to encourage people to do more at home. And I make no excuse, I believe composting is absolutely the way forward for a large number of people who are able to take up the offer of the way the Suffolk Waste Partnership comes forward with a plan for the people of Suffolk. And we should encourage that. There is no reason not to encourage people to do more at home, home composting. And, and that is the way the Suffolk Waste Partnership will take this forward. And then it is down to the district and boroughs to make their own decision on whether they do or do not charge for the brown bin service. Um, we have to push, as we have in the past, on plastics and on textiles with home composting. And I think it is a very good solution, a very good way forward. It is absolutely part of Suffolk, the greenest county. And you can argue that it's not, but it absolutely is. Home composting is an integral part of that, and I'm very pleased that we'll be pushing down that, pushing that, that uh, mode forward going forward. Oh, go on, then. I'm, I'm absolutely 100% behind any push to home composting. I, I'm sure that we can encourage more home composting. I think taking food waste out of the brown bin collections is a very sensible step forward and I have always wanted to do that which is one of the reasons why I thought food waste collections in Ipswich was a very sensible way forward and I think it would be a sensible way forward in the rest of the county as well. But what I don't believe is a sensible way forward is to charge uh, what amounts to an additional tax to those uh, councils that continue to make a free brown bin collection and I can't see how you can say that is contributing towards the greenest county I just, I just think we have to disagree Councillor Manfield Thank you On the first page of this it refers to the free non-subscription non collections with the word free in parenthesis the, um, the parenthesis t tends to disappear as you get into it, um, and there it sort of implies that free it is not. It is prepaid. We're already paying for this. Um, so to introduce a subscription is actually a second charge. The other thing I would challenge is if something is patently untrue or un in unbelievable, if you repeat it enough times, then people start to believe it. And the phrase, 20 tonne trucks on rural roads, has been used by Councillor Hicks seven times, according to my count, in this. Now, what is a, what's a rural road? I don't have any in my division. <laughs> there, there, are, there, are, there are lots of, of people, and Councillor Wood, who's now, now gone, he said all parts of Suffolk should be treated the same. They can't be treated the same, because they're very, very different. Uh, and my uh, fellow Labour councillors over there who represent what I would regard as uh, petty bourgeoisie suburbs compared to <laughs> some of the areas that I represent, which, which are terraced houses. They don't have any gardens. Some of them don't even have a forecourt. The possibility of, of home composting, which I agree should be encouraged, just is not possible. I don't know what Waveney are proposing, but at the moment, they don't have any home composting. It's just a, a non-starter. And they do collect food waste in, in Waveney. It's all part of it, and it all goes um, to the collective places. This, this part of making stuff at the greenest county, uh, the home waste um, recycling centres, which, again, Council X referred to as having specifically designed for this purpose. And they're also... The, we have trucks which are specifically designed for the collection of waste, which a 10-year-old Ford Mondeo, rather than a Ford Prius, uh, which a lot of my uh, constituents would use, it's, just, it's not green at all. It's ridiculous to expect them to do this. 
There are, there are a few places in here where it says free collections undoubtedly achieve a higher municipal composting rate and divert material away from disposal. I think that's very true. It's very true. And if you take that away, it'll just go in the black bin. And so, so yes, and all of this, it moves towards penalising people who live in the more urban and the poorer areas. It's OK for the people with the larger gardens, and I would agree some of the things can't even be recycled there. But most, most of my constituents, it just, it's, it's a non-starter. They, they rely on that bin to recycle things, and it is, a lot of it is food waste, because they don't have a lot of gardens. Maybe a window box. Thank you. Councillor Hicks. Thank you. I mean, I'd just like to take you back to how we've got to where we are today. This is something that's come forward from the Suffolk Waste Partnership, which is made up by all districts and boroughs. And we've got to the point where we are today because they have moved forward with a putting behind their individual districts and boroughs and coming forward with a common plan for the good of Suffolk. That's where we are today. That's where we are coming with our paper here, and it'll be up to each district and borough to take their own papers to their own councils. So... There are differences around the county, of course, and each district and borough will deal with those differences as they see fit. I think that's all I can really add. Councillor Sayers. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Chairman. I mean, as an authority, we're in obviously in no position to dictate on this, but obviously when consultation uh, goes forward with meeting the other districts, if only we can get some sort of platform and understanding of where we all are working on the same sort of uh, lines regarding uh, you collect the bin. This is what it's all about, really, isn't it? I, I started off uh, composting, then I found, as others have done, there's a certain amount of stuff that won't compost. So what did I do? I invest in a bin. And uh, in doing that, I've made uh, quite an imp uh, uh, helping in less congestion in my town getting to the waste site, uh, less air pollution in getting there because you'll get holed up in the traffic, and so on and so forth, and wear and tear on the roads. But people, I find, there is this resistance to this charge. This, I pay £40. I'm like, I can afford to pay £40, but I know a lot of people who can pay less. And I can't understand why we can't have a, a uniform, lesser figure. I think, it'd be, then I think people would be attracted to having a bin. I think composting, it's been tried. I was on Baber District Council for... 20 more years, and there's been campaigns about home cost composting. composting. But, yeah, you see, that's all well and good if you've got a garden or somewhere to put the stuff you've composted. What do you do with it, with it all? And I've got one where I've, I've seen a family of rats in there. So I would advocate somewhere along the line, if only all the councils could say, those who charge, like Baber, pay it, receive a little less, don't make it £40, Make it 20 or 25 pounds. I think then you'd find more and more people would take up the brown bin. And that's what we're really after, as I see it. So it's just, just a thought that I think that might help a little bit. I don't know. I think it's all about the... This is list of people have got a resistance to paying 40 pounds or maybe more for a bin. Especially when, as the gentleman is saying, they're, they're already <laughs> in their rates, think they're paying for it. That's a hex. Thank you for that. Um, I, I think we just need to remind you, really, it's going to be down to the individual district and boroughs to determine the charge. And, uh, you know, I would suggest that if you, if you have a particular view on where the charge should be set, you know, you contact the district and boroughs and, and, and make your you know, point to them, because it will be the, it's purely down to them to decide at what level they set the Or if they choose not to set a fee, it is down to them, not down to us. Thank you. Um, Councillor Flood. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I expect you were anticipating me teasing Councillor Hicks about the greenest county. Not at all. Energy from waste. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant achievement. Have you looked at biogas from green waste? That's one question. And now a few comments. Um, composting below a certain level doesn't work. You have to have a certain amount of green waste and in particular you can't put too much grass. Grass will not rot down unless it's mixed with more general waste. Putting it together in a communal bigger bin will work but then as was commented it's been tried and it doesn't work. I speak as somebody who's been involved in one of these 
everybody's issue with a free composting bin. I had one bin at the bottom of the garden. Um, we put stuff in it for five years. And then we took the bin off because they've got no bottom to them. And at the bottom was something with the cons uh, consistency of a flattened brick. Um, you could jump up and down on it and you could see the individual plant things. Composting is a skill and it's a skill that will have to be taught and you need patient people to do it. What's going to happen is people will not subscribe and as Councillor Martin commented, they'll dump. I have, around our area, even though we have brown bins, people dump and they put their garden waste in absolutely immortal black plastic bags. They drive them into the forest and dump them. And you can come back in a century and the damn things will still be there. The other thing, which is not quite as bad as that, is burning. Um, I think back at what we used to do in the old days before we had all these strange coloured bins out the back of the house. And quite a lot of stuff was burnt. People had small incinerator bins. And that does work. And you will be delighted to know that this is an extremely green system because what it does, it generates aerosols and the aerosols cool the planet and resist global warming. Councillor, I'm exactly. mightily confused um, on getting advice on global warming from Councillor Flood. Um, I, I know nothing about biogas. Um, have we... Is, is there any information on that you would like to share? We're looking at... We're looking at a range of options for food. The problem is at the moment that we haven't managed to come up with an option for treating food waste, which is cheaper than collecting it and incinerating it. At the point at which technologies such as biogas, such as anaerobic digestion, which I think is probably the front runner, um, as soon as it's cheaper to collect the waste and treat it in an anaerobic digester rather than burn it, I think we should do it immediately because it will make good environmental and financial sense. But what we're not advocating is collecting it at even greater expense than it costs to collect it and burn it at the moment. And just, just coming on to your second point um, about having good compost, I think absolutely the key message will have to be that, we, that uh, the Suffolk Waste Partnership runs an extremely good campaign explaining really the details of how you do make good compost so that actually you get a good product coming out of the compost bin at the end. But that will all be down to a really good marketing campaign, a good statement so that people are really made aware of how to operate their bins successfully. Right, do we have any more questions? Councillor Crosley. In conclusion, Chairman, the answer lies in the soil. <laughs> Thank you for that contribution. Do you wish to respond to that, Councillor Higgs? I think we can... Right. Any more? Okay, lovely. So, what we are asked to decide is support a move to subscription collections of garden waste to reduce costs and agree that where waste collection authorities introduce this policy, the savings are shared 50-50 between the county council and the collection authorities. B, reduce the county council's subsidy for free non-subscription collection of garden waste to the legal minimum. C, increase support for home composting. D, authorise the Director of Resource Management in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Environment and Public Protection and in discussion with the Suffolk Waste Partnership and the public sector's leaders to undertake the appropriate action necessary to effect this, to give effect to th this proposal. All those in favour? We are unanimous. Excellent. Right, moving swiftly along to agenda item 12, sensing change, future contract arrangements, and the floor is yours, Councillor Hofsensberger. Thank you. The joys of being last on the bill of a heavy agenda, but no, last but by no means least. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, Colleagues, you will see from the paper before you that Sensing Change has been a wholly owned company since 2011 under pilot arrangements. It provides social work, rehabilitation and support to people with sight and or hearing loss throughout Suffolk. It was originally set up as a social work practice with duties delegated to it via a service level agreement with Suffolk County Council for the duration of the Department of Health's pilot scheme. 
the social care staff were seconded into the company and carry out assessment functions as well as commissioning and contract management for some of the services to their customers on behalf of the council, as well as delivering some services to third parties. The Department of Health pilot was extended until March 2014 in order to allow further evaluation. Despite the extension, King's College, who undertook the evaluation, were unable to draw any firm conclusions relating to social policy development. We therefore need to make further future arrangements for the contract, and today we are recommending that the Council, number one, fully establish sensing change as a wholly owned company following the pilot of that mo model, including full financial separation and two pay of staff, Number two, and recommend that the arrangements would be under a five-year contract with a break clause at two years and with built-in 6% required annual savings and that the Director of ACS and the Director of Resource Management in, consult in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Finance are delegated to complete a due diligence, contract development and all other elements to deliver recommendations in practice. By making the recommendation to continue trading as a wholly owned company, we want to build on what has already been achieved from the pilot. Sensing change has made a surplus of 400,000, which has been achieved through efficiencies and developing income generation activity. It has achieved a 4.5% saving on the core contract price through efficiency in staff costs and reductions in housing relating support cost. It has generated £15,000 in income outside the core contract. Sensing Change quite rightly proud of the fact that 98% of the customers rate, rate the service as excellent and this is something that we would want to maintain. The staff have a high level of morale with reduced stress and staff absences, which has, which, sorry, which has been achieved through creating a culture of ownership and responsibility. And through the new operating model, there are smaller caseloads and quicker turnaround of cases. However, there are some areas which need to be develop, developed further. The company needs to fully realise the potential levels of income that could be generated. A full financial separation between sensing change and the council in order to fully understand the costs in relation to premises, support services such as payroll, IT and HR, which is currently provided by the council. And a mature financial model for the company needs to be established, as does the two pay of staff, so that the company has a full autonomy. Giving sensing change needs to develop as a company, there are advantages of doing this in the wholly owned company model, which are the potential to learning from other companies in the group, particularly in respect of developing greater com commercial acumen. As 80% of a wholly owned company must come from the council, it leaves a greater scope for generating income, up to 20% of income, giving room for development, reinvestment in service delivery and to reduce contract costs. Through the employment appointment of a senior Suffolk County Council rep on the board, we would ensure oversight of the statutory duties and would be able to drive development of the company. Full open procurement of this service is not recommended because there is an immature and undeveloped market locally for the core statutory social work function of the service, and we need to be sure that open procurement would enable us to meet statutory requirements. With an undeveloped market, we do not have confidence that this would be the case. As sensing change are not fully established as a company and they would not be able to effectively bid in an open procurement of the service. The plans for the wholly owned model would enable the company to be fully established and open procurement could be considered in a reasonable time period via break clause in the proposed five year contract at two years. The proposed delegation of responsibility of cabinet members would ensure detailed oversight of the delivery of the recommendations. Mr. Chairman, I condemn the I condemn the paper. I commend the paper <laughs> and the recommendations to you for approval. Thank you, Councillor Hondsworth. That, I was going to say that isn't what you said earlier. <laughs> right. Thank you. So, at page 170, we are being asked to decide. Oh, quite a lot. To approve in principle that the council enters into the new contract with Sense of Change as a wholly owned company by the Council for up to five years, with a break clause at two years. The contract will incorporate changes to custom practice, which would include A, B, C, D, E and F, 
and then at 7.2 to authorise the Director for Adult Community Services and the Director of Resource Management in consultation with Cabinet members for adult care and finance to oversee full due diligence to ensure the proposals represent best value for the Council. B, negotiate and approve the detailed terms of the arrangement with sensing change, including the terms of the service contract, break clause, and any other associated documents to give effect to the project, and approve the terms of any transitional arrangements needed to enable sensing change to revise government arrangements and carry out the due diligence for any move from common staff to staff transfer to the company. And uh, just before we, I open it up to Cabinet, I'd like to commend certain people sitting within the public alley for surviving the entirety of the meeting so far to arrive at this item. So um, open it up to Cabinet. Who would like to speak? Councillor Goulson. Having heard the report and read what you've, uh, the written report as well, are we encouraging Sensing Change to write a more robust business plan which will help to further develop the, uh, their service improvements and financial status? Absolutely. Um, part of our um, support of the service is to um, build on their um, business and their successes already to ensure that they are stable, on a stable footing and financial footing going forward. Any other member of the Cabinet wish to speak? No, so I'll open it up to the floor. Questions from the floor. Councillor Martin. Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, the 6% per annum uh, reduction in the contract price, um, given that the vast majority of the cost for sensing change is going to be staff, is that going to be achieved by reducing the number of staff or by reducing the pay of the staff or by reducing the terms and conditions of service of the staff? And... Um, in terms of redundancies, um, presumably at the moment, if people and in sanction change were making redundancies, then the county council would meet the redundancy costs. If, as a result of them being tupied over, uh, there are then redundancies, presumably the county council would not have to meet the redundancy costs. Is that right? Councillor Hoffman. I would ask the officer to answer the redundancy costs, but with regards to the 6% um, efficiency savings, that would be entirely up to the company to decide where they are, where they are derived from. Um, the redundancy costs will be uh, if the staff were made redundant. We're expecting the company to trade because we will be supporting the company to trade and um, any surplus or income they get in, that what will be used to reduce the grant funding. And the grant funding at, in its terms we can't reduce, but as they bring in more money, they can be paying themselves. So um, redundancy will be up to the company to see um, how they bring in more business. So, sorry, Chair, that doesn't actually answer the question. But what you're saying is, yes or no, that if staff are made redundant once they've been tupied, then the redundancy costs will need to be met by sensing change as a separate company and not by the county council? Yes. It, except it's not a separate company, it's a wholly owned, so there's a slight... That's a, yeah, maybe... So a, yeah. Um, just a correction. If the company is fully divested and become a separate entity from the council and they decided to make rearrangements within their, co their company and make some staff redundant, then they will have to meet those um, redundancy costs. But as a wholly owned company, we'll be working with the organization. Sandy, is that answer for you? If the company has to make redundancies, and in particular, if sensing change fails to win a contract at the end of the current contract period, which there's a break clause in two years, in which case everyone will have to be made redundant, will the redundancy pay for those people be found? If sensing change hasn't got the money to meet the redundancy costs, will that be found from the county council? I suspect the answer is no. Eve, do you feel you can answer that? Yeah, um, there are two elements I think um, we need to clarify. As the staff stand now, there is enough uh, work for them to do, so there is no requirement for staff redundancy. It's a wholly owned company, and it will be trading as a wholly owned company. The 
issue becomes if they're fully divested from the cancer, they're no longer part of the cancer, standing alone, at a later point in time, a um, different situation would apply. Councillor Lockington. Um, yes. Can I ask, are they based in county council buildings and have you finished all the agreement then about the cost of them renting buildings back from the county? Is everything legally, has, have, have you signed it so that they know precisely as a company what cost they must uh, meet with the running cost? As I mentioned in my um, opening speech, that's all part of the, um, the contract negotiation going forward with regards to premises costs and support costs that they currently have from Suffolk County Council with regards to HR, payroll and such. So that's all part of the contract negotiation. Sorry, so, so that hasn't been, none of that has been agreed yet? Yes, that's still to be agreed? Pleasure. It will be agreed once, if this recommendation goes forward today. Councillor Jacqueline. Ah, yes, I see the, um, the appointment of a senior representative of the Director of Audit and Community Services to the Board to oversee the delivery of social care statutory accountabilities. Would that be a non-executive director or would he be an executive director or he or she be an uh, executive director? And in which case, who would find the costs? That is likely to be Anna McCready, and she can nominate who sits on that, and it would be an non-executive director. And who would meet the cost of the uh, officer's time? Would it be sensing change, or would it be uh, Suffolk County Council? Uh, we will be working the detail out in due course. My understand when we've done this in the past, it's part of the role we have here and therefore the cost remains here rather than moving across because it's our rep on their board. So that's, a, that's certainly how it's worked with Concertus and, and EFMS, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. So I refer you to page 170. At 7.1, we are asked to approve in principle that the council enter a new contract with Sensing Change as a company wholly owned by the council for up to five years, break clause at two, and incorporating A, B, C, D, E, and F, then to authorise the director for adult community services and the director of resource management in consultation with the cabinet members for adult care and finance, to oversee full due diligence to ensure the proposals represent best value to the council, negotiate and approve the detailed terms, the arrangements of presenting change, including the terms of the service contract, break clauses and any associated documents required to give effect to the project, and approve the terms of any transition arrangements needed to enable sensing change to revise governance arrangements and carry out the due diligence for any move from secondment of staff to staff transfer to the company. So, all those in favour? We are unanimous in that. Any other business? No? Therefore, oh, Councillor Mountfield. Right, that's a typo, which will be corrected. All future cabinet meetings will start at 2 p.m. And we will endeavour to move them around the county, so we effectively will be in the Riverside at Lower Staff and West Suffolk House, so that we move between the three. That being said, the meeting is closed. Thank you. <laughs>